Hello, good morning. Welcome to Hour of Destiny Daily Devotional and Spiritual Breakfast with Reverend Mike Eniola. Welcome to Friday, the fifth day of the fifth month of the year 2023. Open your mouth this morning and receive grace for double grace. I want to pray for you this morning that in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the grace of God that brings double blessings is coming upon somebody today. You will receive double in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody is hearing me this morning. They were giving people something somewhere. But unfortunately, when you got there, they said you could not get that it was finished. But I'm praying for you this morning. For that loss, God is giving you double. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am praying for you today. If you can say amen, the kind of believing amen, somebody somewhere today will remember you and bless you in the name of Jesus. I am praying for you today that the mighty hand of God will send helpers of destiny. He will bring burden bearers to you today. God will connect you with men and women that will help your vision to materialize in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray that every satanic propaganda and every evil agenda against your life, against your family, your career, business, and ministry are hereby destroyed in Jesus' name. I want to pray for you. You may not know this, but somebody is hearing me. There's somewhere where the enemy have kept you. Even you yourself, you don't know that your glory and your destiny have been covered and hidden somewhere. But as I'm praying for you this morning, by the authority and the mercy of God, somebody is gaining freedom today in Jesus' name. I am praying for divine provisions and divine elevation for somebody today. God Almighty will remember you and bless you today and promote you and elevate you. In Jesus' name, everyone that will be traveling today to go for weekend, to go for ceremony, to go for some sort of occasion, I pray that the Lord will go before you. The Almighty God will prosper your journey and the Lord will make everything to be prosperous and it will end in praise. In Jesus' name, I want to pray against air crash today in any part of the world. I declare that it will not happen. The Lord will avert it, and his children shall be saved. In Jesus' name, you are blessed, and you are lifted. Somebody shout, Amen. I believe as I receive. Glory to God. Beloved, today is Friday. The continuation of our Bible reading, we are reading the book of Romans chapter 13 and chapter 14. The book of Romans chapter number 13 and 14. Please read and gain understanding. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Now, back to our subject, don't create that mess. I'm very sure in a very short while, we are going to be changing our topic from don't create that mess into other things that the Lord has for us. But there are a lot of people that are you know, sending messages and you no know, confirming it. A lot of people have said, Daddy and Yola, I see myself, I see so many messages I've created. But the one you create unknowingly to you, unintentionally, God can wipe it off. But the one you deliberately, stubbornly, intentionally, you saw it, you knew it was wrong, and but you went into it, then you don't expect God to clean it up for you. But even with that, it can still show you mercy. Today, or for the past few days, we've been talking about certain things that we need to know, especially in the area of not creating mess for our health. We have spoken about eating a good thing. Don't just eat for nothing. Eat to maintain good health. We have also talked about our regular exercises. We've talked about taking off time to rest. This morning, Another area is you need to do regular medical checkup. We've been told that once you are aging, once you are above 40, you should set time to go for regular medical checkup. But a lot of us are guilty in this area. Somebody will say, well, but nothing is wrong with me. I am strong. I don't need to see a doctor. Yes, you may be strong. Thank God for that. But it is not out of place. It is not out of faithlessness. If you go and see a doctor, 
There was one time an evangelist, one of the greatest evangelists of his time, Charles Finney, was quoted as saying, God gave me a message and a horse, but unfortunately I killed the horse without delivering the message. He was referring to the mismanagement of his health that greatly affected his ministry eventually. You will find that on page 75 of my book, Don't Create That Mess. I talk about Charles Finney there. He said, God gave me a message to deliver and he gave me a horse to ride to where I would deliver the message. But he killed the horse without delivering the message. He used that as a parable talking about his body, the misuse and the mismanagement of his body. I want to put it to you this morning, beloved. Take time before it becomes dangerous. You need to see a doctor. I remember not too long ago, my wife and my first son, they started bombarding me. Daddy, you need to see a doctor. You need to see eye doctor. Let them check your eyes. I told them, I said, nothing is wrong. My eyes very sharp. I can see object from far or anywhere. They say, yes, but you still need to go and see an ophthalmologist. And I said, okay, let's go. I went there. They carried out their routine check and they discovered that nothing, but I just needed to change the lens of my reading glasses. And with that clean bill of health, I am good to go. So I put it to you this morning, beloved, there are believers who believe that a Christian should not see a doctor. I don't know that, but seeing a doctor does not mean that you are not a Christian. Seeing a doctor does not mean that you are going to hell. Even the doctors that are working, it is God that gives them the wisdom. If you look at page 74, page 74 of my book, there is a paragraph there that I say, don't create that mess in your head. Don't cause injury to yourself. Don't damage your head to the extent that you are reduced to a mere vegetable while still alive. There are things you don't need prayer for. If you walk in wisdom, you don't walk with your eyes open into a trap and then you start to pray against the consequences. Dangerous fasting and sleepless all-night prayers may not help. Just avoid creating the mess for yourself. I remember I had a story of a great preacher in one of the Central African countries. He had about three days program each day, both daytime and nighttime, and he drove himself from Nairobi to Mombasa for a meeting, and he was coming back to Nairobi to catch a flight to travel out, and he drove himself again after all night prayer. Traveling from Mombasa, coming back to Nairobi, in a short while, he slept off while driving, and the car veered off into a gully. He never survived it. He created a mess for himself. So as you hear me this morning, please don't do that. Take time to see a medical doctor. Don't wait until your eyes. I told some of my pastors and some men in church recently, don't wait until you start putting your book about half kilometer in your hand. You put your book very far to you before you can be able to read. Why don't you go and see a doctor? Let them check your eyes. If you need to get reading glasses, go ahead and get it. It will not make you to go to hell. Please take time to see a doctor. Finally, number five, I said, set aside time for recreation with your family. There are many of us who are too spiritual, highly spiritual, that don't have time to play with their wife and children or with their husband, always in the spirit. My friend, drop that. You are still a mortal man. You are still in the flesh. Take time off for recreation with your family. If you look at page 76 of the book, Don't Create That Mess, I said, this is what happens when a minister has created a mess in interpreting God to his family, especially his children. Okay, let me start reading from all. The homes and family of many ministers are falling apart because they are denied adequate attention. As a minister, you can handle ministry in such a way that your children will desire to serve the Lord full time too. It is heartbreaking when a pastor's son says disdainfully, it is my father that God called. I don't have time for ministry. Let me be. I've had preachers. I've had some pastors, children that says, I don't want to serve the same God that my father is serving that makes him not to have time for us. I read further again. This is what happens when a minister has created a mess 
in mispresenting God to his family, especially his children. He paints a picture of a killjoy God to them because of the way he neglects his family in the name of the ministry. How glorious it will be to see your children actively involved in God's service because you are a role model to them. They love your God and are dedicated to him as well as you are. So please take time off. Take time off. The ministry will not die in your absence. Let Archbishop Bidaosa of blessed memory. In those days of the organized convention, people said, Daddy, let's round up the convention on Friday so that pastors can go back to their churches on Saturday so as to minister on Sunday. Let Archbishop said, if any of you, if because you are not going to be in church on Sunday, the church is going to die, it means that the church is dead before you left there. So you're not being in church on Sunday. If the church is healthy, if the church is of the Lord, you're taking time off some days to go and rest and leave the church in the hand of your associate will not make the church to die, except if the church is on your head and the church is your own. Not only in the area of church, any business you are doing at all, if you are not there, another person will do it. They will do it better than you. So please, as I round up on the area of don't create mess for your head, take time off and set aside time for recreation with your family. As you do so, the Lord will bless you. My children are already asking me, I say, Daddy, where are we going for vacation this year? I'm still prayerfully, I'm still playing around their intelligence, telling them that the will of God be done. But they are already asking, Daddy, we need to go on vacation. So it is not a sin. If you set aside time for recreation, the Lord will give you the resources. The Lord will give you the willpower to do it. God bless you and have a great day. Remember, read your two chapters of the Bible in the book of Romans today. Romans chapter 13 and 14. God bless you. Have a fruitful day and a wonderful weekend ahead. In Jesus' name, amen.